Good evening, you're watching The Nation at 5. My name is Toya Singh. On the show, we bring you reports from across the country. We check the mood of the country at 5 p.m. Now, as we speak, the country is still bathing in the afterglow of the milestone that it reached yesterday. You remember, India became the first country to ever land a spacecraft on the lunar south pole. Let's take a look. Off normal. Here we have a majestic lift off of LVF 3 M4 rocket carrying India's prestigious Chandrayaan 3 spacecraft. We are nearing the final phase of the power descent, approaching the moon's surface. What an incredible moment this is for ISRO, for India's space scientists, and for all of us. Sir, we have achieved soft landing on the moon. India is on the moon. Jab hum apni aankhon ke saamne aisa itihas bante huye dekhte hain, even antya ho jaa. Ye chhan jeet ke chandra path par chalne ka. We are focusing on the huge milestone that the country achieved yesterday. Remember, India became the first country in the world to land successfully on the lunar south pole. Why does that matter? The lunar south pole has craters that have not been touched by sunlight in billions of years. What that means is that there's actually water, ice and other volatile substances that are present in those craters that scientists are excited to experiment on to find out what the solar system looked like billions of years ago. Now, my colleague, Harish Padhyay, who's present with us in Bengaluru, brought us this interview with the ISRO chairman. He was able to sit with the person under whose leadership India has been able to make this huge achievement. Take a look. This is the interview. Now, we're going to bring you that interview in just a second. But as we show you that interview, because I do want to bring it for you, let me just bring you a little bit of the context. Remember, there are instruments on board the Vikram lander and the Pragyan rover. And these experiments, these instruments are supposed to carry out experiments over just the next 14 days. These 14th Earth days equal one lunar day. And the experiments need to be completed in that time because after that, the lack of sunlight will mean temperatures will drop to a degree that the instruments may not be able to carry out those experiments. Anyway, let's very quickly go to the interview that I wanted to show you a little while earlier. My colleague Harish Shapadhyay down in Bengaluru brought us this interview with ISRO's chief. Take a look. Well, the entire country is proud of ISRO for the kind of achievement it has made. And joining me today is the chief of ISRO, Mr. Somnath. Sir, first of all, congratulations. Thank you so much. So, uh, I'll come to the first aspect which perhaps the entire country now wants to know. Uh, one, the health of the lander and the rover. And if scientific ex experiments have started, the payloads on board have started their job. Health is good. Both are working very well. Uh, experiments are yet to start. It will take some more time. Okay. So, uh, you spoke over the last 15 minutes and called it almost 15 minutes of terror. If you can recollect the last 15 minutes, sir, uh, many, many of them have called it almost a textbook precision landing. What went through your mind, sir? No, it is supposed to be a textbook precision landing. Hmm. So there is nothing uh, su surprising for me hmm. and uh, nothing was anxious in that part because it was following the trajectory of what we designed. Uh, so it was, it was giving so much a hope that it will land it uh, perfectly well. Hmm. So I had no, no worries. Not even the last few minutes. Why should I? Yeah, there hmm. was no reason for it. Okay. So, uh, in fact, the next challenge now everyone to is talking about is uh, the exploration starts. The rover has already rolled out. Uh, what are the challenges on the lunar surface, sir? Many say perhaps the lack of atmosphere itself might be no, a No, there are challenge. many issues in the lunar surface we are experiencing for the first time, especially when mechanisms, moving items are there on the surface. They, it can get entangled with the dust there. It can get into the moving parts and jam them. The bearings of the system may not work, the motors may not work, uh, and it gets stuck. You know, the dust is a special dust, not like the Earth's surface. In the absence of atmosphere, air, 
it gets stick, sticking too much to the materials and weld it, get welded. We call it cold fusion welding and things like that. So all this creates problems in those mechanisms. We are yet to experience. So let us see how it goes. Uh, and uh, the issues of term temperature on the surface yeah. is again another issue. So we will we'll face it by the time it goes. Sometimes we may face, sometimes it will be a new, new learning for us. We will wait for it. Yeah. That is why we are exploring. Everything is known. What is the fun in going there? Absolutely. Uh, so one aspect that everyone wants to now know is uh, what happens to the kind of data that comes in. Is this something that now uh, will also be shared with other space agencies? Or will ISRO first analyze the set of data that comes? No, there from? are there are mechanisms for data analysis. There is a separate committee which is looking into it, in which all uh, principal investigators of each of the payloads, as well as co-investigators, his collaborators. There is a team, big team behind every instrument, and they will get all this data. They will make sense out of it, and they are all Indian company, Indian scientific Scientists. community, and they will use this data first before mm. it give to anybody. And that will be posted to our uh, centralized archives, which can be accessed by the entire world hmm. uh, at free, at very, very freely after some lock-in period. And lock-in hmm. period has to be decided. Yeah. So uh, many people saying that this is one of the major steps. Uh, what is the future, sir? The next step. People are talking about perhaps a mission that retrieves samples from moon. Uh, Gaganyan perhaps will be the another step in putting a man uh, in the space first and then on a planet. What next, sir? Yeah, we should, we should do all of that one day uh, because the whole of this is done to for enhancing our understanding and also demonstrating our technological capabilities. Bringing sample from moon is needed at some point in time when we think that we have an ability to do that. Possibly we may have it very fast or sometimes may not ever do it also depending upon the situation. We may be able to go there and do it ourselves there instead of bringing it here. So it depends on the type of technology and money and investment that we can afford at that point in time. So, and there are many more missions we should do. It's not limited to moon. We need to go to Mars, we need to go to Venus, we need to understand other planets. Sometimes go out of the our Earth, uh, solar system also to other exosolar planets. So, all these are needed. We should do all of this. These are, these are first stepping stones of achieving that. In, for our generation, this is a step. Then for next generation, there will be many bigger steps. True. Uh, in fact, uh, the other question that many have is, why did ISRO choose the South Pole region? The general uh, observation is that perhaps because it's not explored much, not explored at all in fact. Were there any other reasons, sir? What much, as much as I know, South Pole is having lesser sol sun heat, sunlight. So because of that, there are possibilities of various scientific interest is very high. It is hypothesized that by various scientists who are known to the moon science, that there could be a larger deposit of water beneath the surface. Of course, that is not, not the objective of this science hmm. mission. But uh, there are other mineralogical observations which will be much different from the equatorial region. And uh, landing there itself is again a challenge. Hmm. So we would like to achieve that being a challenging mission and also achieve it in the very first time, very first country to do land near to the South Pole. So that way it may marks a lot of scientific interest. Yeah. Sir, Aditya L1 about to perhaps take off in a few weeks from now. The Prime Minister has spoken about Mars and Venus. We have successfully had a Mars orbiter mission. Uh, in terms of the priorities, sir. Uh, which are the ones that ISRO would now? No, prior, it's, we have well defined role, road map for doing it. We are starting with the Aditya L1 now. Then we will have missions on Gaganyan, uh, which is an abort mission. And there are other regular launches of PSLV, GSLV, SSLV, LVM3, all of them are in the offing. We will have to have the NSIR, NASA, NASA ISRO Synthetic Approach, NISAR project yeah. is currently getting completed for next year beginning. We have to do that launch also. So you mentioned Gaganyan, so a quick question on that. Uh, where does it stand today, sir? Gaganyan is going very fine. We have completed the human rating of the GSLV Mar 3 or the LVM 3. Uh, then uh, we have also developed the rest of the systems like the crew module, crew escape system, and etc. We have to test it hmm. finally now through various tests and it has to go through qualifications, etc. So we are in that process and test flight which we are scheduling is part of one of those major tests. And such six, seven tests are to be done as launching itself until we, you know, before we send the man yeah. to space. So final couple of questions. Uh, you mentioned about passing off the knowledge from one generation to another. Uh, how do you see, where do you rate Chandrayaan, sir? Where do you put it in terms of the impact this is likely to have on the generation? No, it, will definitely have a, it will definitely have a big impact because it is a milestone event in the history of space program of this country. Going there and landing softly on moon has been mm -hmm. attempted by many yeah. and never succeeded. So it really marks a technological transition point.
Hmm. It is also a transition point in view of the poli or the policies of the government. We have hmm. a spa space policy 2023 announced. Yes. So both are coinciding in 2023. It's a watershed event year. And in fact, I should say that the space sector is going through a, such a transformation, technologically, scientifically, and uh, in terms of the <coughs> Uh, ecosystem building through mm -hmm. private public partnerships and uh, private ecosystem coming up the space economy is also going to boom large yeah i'll, I'll come to that space economy bit in a in a, in a bit uh, but one aspect is you demonstrated soft landing capability yesterday uh, many are also saying the fact that instruments like a ldv like a, a hazard detection and avoidance camera and many other equipments have been developed in-house by isro is a far bigger technological uh, capability demonstration. How do you see it? Sir? It is. It is because instruments are not available for procurement that easily and it costs us too much. So our laboratories have developed all those instruments, the camera based systems, laser based systems. So we have capability, including the inertial system inside is Indian. Hmm. So it's such something really strong technological backup that we are working on satellite and launch vehicles. We are all very happy about that part. Yeah. So you spoke about space economy. Many are saying that yesterday's soft landing perhaps will push ISRO's share in the commercial space economy to perhaps double digits or more than that. What is your assessment, sir? First thing I want to tell you, ISRO is a scientific establishment. It's not a commercial hmm. assessment. We, are, we have no interest to uh, exp do business. Yes. Business is to be done by private entrepreneurs. Hmm. So what we are trying to do is whatever we have developed for which are commercially viable, we are transforming the industry so that it can be taken up on a commercial process to generate revenue or business. ISRO will concentrate on more R&D, technology development, hmm. etc. so that we will empower our capability. Chandrayaan is an example of that part of the work, that is technological capability development. Hmm. But the operational systems and business and economy are a different area altogether. But there is a pathway between connecting yes. this. With the technology growth, the economy also will grow because yeah. they are linked. Hmm. And older, older technology cannot produce a new economy. Yes. So we need newer technology to make a new economy, like the, uh, the, uh, the 4G, 6G and yes. other communication revolution, quantum communications, hmm. strategic areas. So all we are going into many of these R&D topics and we will hear about that in the future. Yeah. So, so my, my final question to you, uh, we have seen so much progress uh, with the uh, Chandrayaan 3, the Prime Minister likely to visit uh, ISRO, uh, there's a tentative schedule, uh, whole, the whole team looking forward to it? Of course, we look forward to that. Uh, we hope that he will be able to come and meet us and then tell us our way forward. We will look forward to that. Well, sir, thanks a lot for joining us today and congratulations once again. Thank you so much. Well, that was Mr. Somnath. We'll keep getting you more details about Chandrayaan 3. Stay tuned to CNN News 18.